Hey everybody, this is Davis Finney and Connie Carpenter coming to you from our living room here in Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> and we just wanted to, to have some connection to our community to say hello and, and as well as share a few, a couple tips on how to best survive this, this enforced isolation or enforced at home stay period. Yeah, depending on where you live right now, um, this pandemic, the COVID-19 is probably really affecting the quality of your life. And so we really want to address that and give you a few tips of kind of how we're dealing with it and um, maybe pro provide a little inspiration. So, um, you know, with that in mind, one of the things that we've talked about during this is that everyone in the Parkinson's community already feels challenged, right? Um, Every day is challenging if you have Parkinson's, I know yeah. that much. And it's challenging for caregivers. But you know, because we're challenged, we're, we're actually, I, th I think we're hardwired to be a little bit more resilient than the rest of the community, right? We know how to deal with this. And you know, we're stronger together for sure, which is why I'm glad you're tuning in and, and uh, we can feel you supporting us and us supporting you. But you know, during this time of enforced isolation, we really have to try to reach out and make our world feel a little bigger rather than smaller, which it so often does when you have Parkinson's as your world feels small. And it's one of Davis's comments early on was that his world feels a lot smaller. And uh, I think that's, that's challenging, but um, you know. Yeah, I mean. I don't know what to add. To well, that. I think we're just here to remind you that, you know, you need to mine that strength, the strength that you built up uh, as you dealt with Parkinson's and, and, rem and remind yourself maybe daily that, you know, we are stronger together. And, you know, I think with that in mind too, well, is just to set the tone and, and. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree with that a hundred percent. And I'd say the, What's difficult for those of us who are used to being in groups, whether it's our support group or some other club, Parkinson's class. Uh, class, yes. Yeah. <laughs> having a Parkinson's moment, yeah. isn't that ironic? Appropriate, thank and, you for working through that. Yeah. But, uh, but for those of us who are used to being in classes and used to seeing our friends with regularity, then this kind of isolation is somewhat cruel. Cruel, yeah. Cruel. It almost sounded like you said cool. I think it's cruel. Cruel, and I think yeah. It, and I think it, does, it is cr cruel and it brings up a lot um, for all of us. So, you know, with that in mind, let's just sort of catch our breath. I think sometimes when you feel like, you're powerless in the world, the best thing you can do is just take a nice breath in and then let it out. Nice inspiration through your nose and let it out through your nose. And you that can even... In your nose. Well, you can even... <laughs> Busted my jokes. <laughs> just how we get through the day, people. <laughs> but even, even if you're having a really stressful moment, just to take a few breaths and really think about, you know, taking in the good and letting go of the bad. And I think that's really important. And it's a way for you to overcome these minute to minute, um, maybe feelings of panic and feeling of really, um, you know, disorientation. It's really right. disorienting um, in this time, in this community that we're living in, and especially depending on where you live. Some people in the countryside aren't feeling it as much, or maybe feeling it more, you know? Big cities for sure, a lot of stress. Everybody's so stressed. And so in order for us to ensure the quality of our life, I think we really need to take some measures toward, um, toward that and get in control. And so Davis and I wanted to talk about three things that we think are really important they're important every day, but they couldn't be more important now. And those are? Exercise, sleep, and humor. 
humor. And as you can tell, we have no trouble in the humor department. <laughs> yeah. But you know, really, um, I, I say sleep is number one, okay? Sleep and rest is number one to keeping a strong immune system. And you know, I, I know living with Davis now for 30 plus years, but living with Parkinson's for 20 years, that sleep is one of his biggest challenges every night. And it's something that we don't take for granted. Yeah. Not even, not one night, not one rollover, not one, you know, moment. So, you know, I can always tell in the morning when he's woken up rested and it's really important right now. So one of the things we've instituted to improve our quality of sleep is no talk of the coronavirus of COVID-19 after 6 p.m. And in fact, if someone starts that conversation, it's like, oh, yeah. that can wait till tomorrow. And so you really need to stop watching the news, stop reading the news, stop focusing on it. It doesn't yeah. really matter to you at six o'clock at night, does it? It doesn't, it really doesn't. If someone calls you up and wants to talk about it, change the subject. There's a lot more to talk about in the world. Because you just know that it's going to weigh on your it's mind. It's going to be a loop. And that's the worst thing to yeah. for your sleep. Yeah. So if, if we can prevail upon you and, you know, when you can develop this habit of getting off your devices after 6 p.m., it will help you enormously every day, not just during this time of pandemic. But, um, but it's hard. And we're not saying you have to turn off your TV because Davis and I enjoy watching. We've been watching reruns of the West Wing um, where all the matters of, that happened during the West Wing seem so important, but they have nothing to do with today's issues. And there's humor and there's joy and there's political unity. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just a distraction, you know? And uh, we also love watching comedy shows you know we yeah. watch modern family brooklyn 99 you know just silly shows that you know you can just you know if i'm laughing out loud during a tv show i'm guaranteed to sleep well all right okay. so i think that should be a goal for you is to just um you know really really take time to cultivate what you're doing you know in those hours before bed we also get in bed really early we're in bed at nine o'clock and we're reading until probably 10 or until we fall asleep. And, you know, we stay in bed a long time. And I think that that's important too during this time is just to allow yourself to rest. Don't get on Facebook. Don't get on, <laughs> if you do wake up at night, read some more. Read a good book. I've read some great books this last few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and that should help. And that will lead into your next day where you'll feel a lot better and you'll be able to exercise, um, you know, and feel better about yourself. Right. So. And this, of course, also has a relationship with your meds and how you're managing your Parkinson's. But I feel like anything that incites your system to excitement is not good. And so it's that, that calming protocol that if you pursue that consistently night after night, you're going to sleep better, there's no question. Yeah, and getting good exercise during the day really helps. And so, you know, one of the things Davis and I started about six weeks ago because he's, he had to stop going to his classes um, was a morning um, yoga ritual, which we'd never done before together, especially. And I found um, a, a teacher that we liked online who offered 15 minute classes, which seemed the appropriate amount of time to focus and kind of learn some of the moves that maybe we'd learned before, but we haven't done yoga in a long time, to be honest. And, and so we've been working every day now, and we went from doing 15, just one 15 minute class to then two 15 minute classes and sometimes even more, but we, we can pick different areas of the body that we're working on and, and you know, good warm up routine. We do this right after we have coffee. Coffee is important in the morning for us anyway. Yeah. And, uh, but before we've had breakfast and it's just really set a good tone for the day. It makes us both feel better. Feel better. And, yeah. um, it's really loosened us up and uh, you know, just gives us a little distraction to start the day. Um, that feels really good. Yeah, and that's in, for me in lieu of of doing boxing and some of the other classes yeah. that I was 
involved in. And we still get out for a walk or a bike ride, or we, we do have a home trainer when, you know, we had snow last week here in Boulder. So, you know, our weather, it's springtime, it's very up and down. So you have to find something that works. You do need to get yourself outside. It's lovely just to even just sit in the sun for a few minutes and, and just kind of soak up the fact that, you know, the sun is still coming up every day <laughs> and still yeah. shining most of the time, at least here in Colorado. So, you know, just take advantage of what we do have during this time. Well, um, and also because exercise is so important in general for those of us with Parkinson's. Yeah. And, and so through this time, you just don't want to backslide too far and feel your symptoms coming back yeah. to you because you're not getting out and you're not going to to a class that you did or or your normal routines are yeah. so disrupted that it's hard to find the motivation to to get out and do and be and whatnot but, but and, it, and disruption is difficult right and that's especially true for the caregivers because you know all all bets are off as to you know how we're meant to cope with this right so i think it's important that both the person with Parkinson and the caregiver find um, avenues uh, and outlets for their energy or frustration or um, concerns. And, you know, honestly, it's a time to maybe spend some time like reevaluating, you know, how you are living with Parkinson's. And, you know, um, I wrote the book. On, uh, <laughs> I helped to write this actually with the foundation about, you know, how we can rewrite the book of engagement with our person with Parkinson's and really look at that. And this is a great time to kind of go back and this is available online as well as um, as well as uh, in hard copy and just kind of look at how we're um, you know, how we're living with this disease and how we can live better. And we might learn through this kind of forced isolation uh, how to do that better, how to live better with this and how to engage better with each other and, um, and keep things going. But having said that, apathy and lack of motivation can certainly weigh in. A lot of fear will weigh in. And that's where the deep breathing comes in. That's where staying off um, the news cycle will help you. Because not that we want you to be ignorant of what's going on, but we do want you to know that there's not, you should really focus on what you can control yeah, when you during can this do. time period, not what you can't control. And so with that in mind, humor is really important for us. And one of the things we do because, you know, we started doing this because the Parkinson's mask is so problematic, you know, people with Parkinson's losing that ability to show uh, emotion or expressions. And so, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, we're practicing our facial moves. We're exercising our face. And it's so important just to squinch up your face and maybe do it in the mirror. And if you don't laugh doing this, I don't know what will get you laughing. And it also feels really good. It unhinges your jaw. And then you can go back to normal. But a good belly laugh can be had. Yeah, that's right. That's doing that. Right. And I think that just getting yourself to the point of laughter is, uh, that's a victory. Yeah, it's definitely a victory. Because any way that you can, <laughs> that you can, feel coordinated with your care partner is so important. Yeah. And or even just coordinated with your whole face, you know, yeah. like people with Parkinson's struggle with that so mm -hmm. much. And so just to be able to laugh and actually, yeah, and you know, smile. feel it. <laughs> and find that <laughs> smile. It's in there. That's a good one, yeah. So, you know, one of the things um, on the back of my handout uh, for caregivers, who I love you all dearly, and you've helped me so much to learn um, so much about uh, caring for my person with Parkinson's, uh, I say, you can do this. But you know, we changed that tone and we made a little sign. We can do this, right? Little Bird told me, we can do this. And I think that's so important that we can do this. That should be your mantra during this time. But if nothing else, then I think Mr. Feeney also likes to go with the arms up, arms up and, you know, victory. They say that when you go for an interview, you should actually throw your arms up out in the hall before your interview or before maybe giving a public talk. 
because it actually like gets your system going. So, you know, why not have a little victory moment every morning too, people? Yeah. Right? Yeah. On the count of three? Because every victory counts. Every victory counts. <laughs> All right, let's do it. One, two, three. Yes. <laughs> Thank you all so Thank much. Thank you for joining us. We know you can get through this. And remember, we can do this. Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.